YouTube Above Average Code here, coming at you with more of everyone's favorite series, Viewer VOD Review, where we go through a viewer's gameplay and tell them how they can improve their gameplay in Halo Infinite. Today we have some Platinum 1 gameplay here from the homie Nabes. We're going to go through this Streets Oddball game and see and break down some of the sequences so we can not only improve his gameplay, but also you viewers at home. So guys, subscribe, hit that like button, and if you guys would like to submit your own VOD review, stick around to the end of the video and I will tell all y'all how you can do so. Now, going to, into the beginning of this gameplay, Streets Oddball lately has been what I call my kryptonite. I have not been playing well on it. For some reason on Streets, it is just so, so easy to get into that panic. I need to get that oddball and just start funneling towards it and making really, really dumb plays. So I'm going to be really hyper-analyzing you here, Nabes, to see if if you make similar decisions that I like to make. So right off the rip here, you kind of just jump straight up in the air and you're challenging across the middle of the map. Um, all good and fine. You didn't really see anything. It looks like you're making the right move to go off to the right. Um, but honestly, try to get there faster. Like, don't take this, like, super high jump here. And then if you are going to chow this, don't stand out in the open. Definitely hug your cover. Um, you're very much in between place to cover here. Just something to think about when you chow anything off the start. But you do, you don't see anything mid-map. Camel's not coming up for another 24 seconds. You make a good move to go and work your way towards this oddball here. You end up seeing two enemies right away, and you make a good decision to use your cover, right? Your teammate's right behind you. You see the shots flying overhead, and you get a very quick assist. I like everything that I'm seeing so far. Doing a lot of jumping about here, which you really don't need to do. You grab that bulldog, get a nice little kill there, check to your right. And all of this looks very good and fine. I really like that you're working your way back towards that oddball because there isn't really anything going on right here, right? So again, you did a good job. Do a little less jumping. Don't be wasting so much time here jumping. Go grab that bulldog because even if this fella just rushes you, if you get this bulldog, it is already over for him. I guarantee you that. So if you see that bulldog, you see these enemies back down, your teammate was behind you, he just helped you get a kill, it's safe to just run up, grab that bulldog as swiftly as possible. But of course, you get the good kill, and I want to commend you here. Checking to your right before you just run away, right? You don't you don't really know. There could be another enemy lurking there. Um, your teammates are going down over on the B side of the map over here. Actually, one died right behind you here. So you know some stuff is definitely going down. So you work your way back towards this oddball. Other teammate over here dies. So you know there is going to be some heat here, right? So you don't want to push this too, too fast. You pull out the bulldog, you get a nice little kill here. Then you run up and grab that ball. Now, the only issue I have here is grabbing the ball before you really know what you want to do, right? And the little turn you did after picking up the oddball really gave you the info you needed, right? You don't want to be grabbing that oddball unless you have the advantage or everybody is dead. I said this in the last oddball review we did. I'm sure most of you have seen it. And that is, that is what is going through my head, right? So when I kill this enemy... I need to, A, know where my teammates are, and B, know how many enemies are up. Um, and since two of you just died and you just got one kill, they're going to have enemies coming fresh off the spawn, right? And since you have no teammates in your vision, I don't even need to see where your teammates are spawning. It's pretty safe to assume that you're going to have the heat coming from Subway and Seaside, right? So when you grab this ball... You have all the info you need here, right? You have two teammates here. You ran this route to clear out A side. So you know they're going to be flying at you. They're going to be wanting to look at this camo. This is a bad time to be picking up this ball. And you realize that. You kind of just throw it out. And now you're kind of roaming. You you felt like you were kind of indecisive. You're like, oh, no, I should have hold that, held that. And then you ran back out to grab that oddball. And these are the exact decisions that... I'm talking about you really have to, A, have your head on a swivel, and B, be really careful thinking about what you are going to do here, right? So again, once you get this kill, great job. I don't really want to go too crazy for this oddball. Um, and I mean, maybe pick it up and throw it in a different direction, but the moment you take a step, you actually get shot. So somebody is pushing at you here, right? So I like the play to throw it out towards your team, right? Because you want to get the oddball somewhere where... There's going to be fights going down over it. Nobody's just walking out and getting free oddball time. So so this step right here, I'm fine with. But then you have to do what you can to kind of post up and fight for this camo. You have the ball. You have the camo. Both are in the middle of the map. 
you have to do what you can to protect that area and gain control so that you can hopefully come out of it with both camo and the oddball, right? You still have Bulldog with three shots, and you also have two spike grenades. You have to keep in mind what you have in, in the arsenal here. So this obviously was not the play. One, don't run out in the open, especially when there's four enemies up. Two, do not run at that oddball unless you have the advantage. So what I'd like to see you do here, frankly, is use those spike grenades, right? You see when C steps here, he's not even really ready to shoot you. You could chuck a spike grenade here. If you're getting chased, you could throw a spike grenade up. Um, and I'm just showing you guys because it's behind my webcam. But chuck chuck it up to the jump up towards Bulldog there. And you could very much just hold this area, right? Um, because you have not only one but two enemies that are very nervous about you being in ATMs. You know what I mean? Their comms are going to be, there's one in ATMs. You know, he's going to go out and grab camo. They expect you to run out, right? So if you can live up right here and kind of just be a menace, you can buy a, hopefully a few moments for your teammates to come help either tires or B steps, right? So while they are so focused on you, the hope is that your teammates, and you can't plan for them making the right or wrong decisions because who knows what these two are going to do, especially in platinum lobbies, no disrespect, but um, and nobody's making the right decisions all the time. Um, so what you all you can do is buy time and pray that your teammates come to help because it's very likely that your teammates come and get eyes over you towards Bulldog Jump, and if you did any damage to him with that spike grenade, they could get a free kill, and that's how you guys kind of get mid-map control. So that's in a perfect world, that's how it all breaks down, but in this situation, if you're going to go down, go down swinging. Use that Bulldog. Use those spike grenades. I just do not want to see you make this play right here, right? Even if you made a mistake throwing that oddball out, so what? You threw it towards your teammates. Just let it roll out there and just see what happens. Instead, you run out and die. So just kind of just kind of painting for you guys what like that situation kind of should have looked like. And again, if you're going to go down, at least use what you have. Use the grenades. Use everything. This is something I'm very much trying to improve with myself. So I'm preaching it to you guys here in the VOD reviews. Now, I want to see you cycling through your death cams here for sure. Um, see what your teammates are seeing. Pay attention to what you see in here. You see two enemies pinged right here in the middle of the map. So this fella is more than likely going to have some heat coming. Either they're going to push through front A, since your bulldog's sitting right there, or they are going to jump right up through tires. So let's see where you spawn and how you kind of play this out. So you get the red room spawn. What I'm thinking here, check for the stalker rifle. Check for those plasma grenades on B. And then you really want to get towards your ball carrier as quickly as possible. You see your teammates here getting very, very adventurous here on the map. So you got to get to your oddball carrier and help him as quickly as possible. So you don't check for stalker. You don't check for plasma grenades. All right. I need to see you take some gunfights here. Don't be afraid to use your, your frag grenades. You don't, you actually get some info there. Good job checking calf because your teammate was fighting over here. So now you guys are two dead. Your two adventurous teammates are both down. So now it's you and Ball Carrier. You need to win this fight, and you do a very good job doing so, right? So I like seeing your strafe here, and you're crouching a little bit. Make those strafes a little bit wider. I promise you, if you're moving like this, you're not a very hard target to hit. I promise you. You get up to those diamond lobbies, you are going to get absolutely evaporated. So I like that you're comfortable with crouching in these gunfights, but take that strafe a little bit wider, right? Because you're you're kind of just you're you're moving across like a one little one inch of space there. Um, I like to do maybe doorway width. If you can get doorway width, you know, make it longer, make it shorter. Throw some uh throw some jiggle crouches in there. You'll be great. Just something to think about. But your aim, you did good. You know, this the way you maneuver this gunfight, you didn't panic, you didn't take your right stick and pull your reticle off. Good gunfight overall, just widen that strafe a little bit. I think you'll be pleased with the results from that. So, you're working back towards that ball carrier. You got those plasma grenades. Ball carrier dies. So, even though you have those two teammates that died spawning up pretty soon, you know that you are last alive on the map. You are the only person here ready to fight. So, let's see how you take this gunfight. You miss one of the plasmas off the wall, you bump your melee button, and then you fly right out, and then you get the assist, and you're fighting pretty much the entire team here, right? So, you, I think you make the right decision here. You don't just run in for that oddball, okay? You wait. You know your teammates are spawning up, right? You know the help is coming. So you fly out, a little bit ballsy, but you only see one, right? Take this gunfight. A grenade comes in. So now you know, okay... 
my teammates are spawning behind me. So what you know from this is that the enemy team is spawning in C, and chances are pretty good that, that since they spawned very close to that oddball, they are going to be pushing that oddball. This area is an absolute nade blender. Once you get this kill, or your teammate actually gets this kill, I am throwing my grenades there. Do I know they're coming that way? Not 100%, but there's a pretty good chance, again, that they're going to be rushing this oddball, especially with the way this game is going so far. Instead, what actually happens is you get this kill and sprint. Y you just have to be ready for another enemy. This is the equivalent of in my gameplay when I get a kill and I just start reloading, right? You always want to be ready for that next kill. Don't go into that sprint towards that oddball until you get that advantage, right? You only got Your teammate only got one kill there. There's still three other enemies that are going to be very ready to fight. So again... Chuck those grenades. You know they're coming this way and what actually happens. And I mean, obviously it's easy for me to say because I see all three of them. I'm watching the gameplay here. But you just have to be more ready for that because, again, you it's just safe to assume they got that C-spawn since your teammates literally spawned right behind you on PD. So it's very unlikely that they got, like, cafeteria spawns. They could have maybe spawned bottom C steps, but regardless, they are going to be coming your way. And if they're coming B steps, it's going to take them a little bit of time, and you'll hear your teammates fighting them sooner. So it's just a safe bet to chuck my grenades there. And now, just right here, even though you start sprinting and you make the mistake... You still have a second to get out of this and live up, but you very much take the fight, and now you're jumping around, and then you unfortunately get killed by a grenade. Keep your boots on the ground, because you could have probably maneuvered away from this grenade, because you very much saw it come. You could have moved this way and tried to get this kill, um, but instead you do go down to the grenade. Just try to be a little more meticulous about how you take that. And again, you died. With two grenades in the pocket here. Throw those grenades. I don't even care if they don't do anything. As long as they're not hitting your teammates, throw them, you know? Um, you really have nothing to lose. Um, and now I like what I'm seeing. You're going through the death cam. You're checking the scoreboard. Um, guys, don't just be checking the scoreboard to see if you're positive, negative, whatever. Be checking to see how many teammates are alive and dead. If it is shadowed out like this, they are dead. If it is highlighted, they are alive. So you can see right here very quickly... Just off a quick glance, it's a 2v3, right? They have the advantage. So when you spawn up, you know kind of what to expect uh, when you're getting in there. Um, another thing to keep in mind and something I'm always looking at in Oddball is the score. It is 25 to 1. So no matter what happens while you are respawning, do not panic. You guys have a healthy lead here, right? So you spawn A. You are very, very far from your teammates. You want to take a route to to try to get over there. You might even want to check the mid-cross because, again, they are in C and they could be pushing that B-steps angle. So try to... You obviously want to get to your teammates, but don't take a route where you cannot help them until you're on top of them. Take a route where you can get some damage because you could be a very big difference maker in the fights that are about to go down with your teammates here. You take a quick little peek out mid. You don't really see anything. You actually end up meeting one in tires, and I'm pretty sure that you were listening to those gunfights happening um, because he was already a little weak, so good on you. You guys actually get two kills, so you have a great case to chase this oddball. Get in there as quickly as possible, right? So you push these steps. Fantastic, eating up different angles. You actually get a little caught off guard there by this enemy, and you go down. Another one of your teammates goes down, and now this is pretty much an even gunfight. It's actually more like a 1v1 back here, C, because... I, it's, it's not important right now, but I want you guys to think about this. This is a very important aspect of Oddball, no matter what map you are playing or no matter what skill you are at, right? There are two enemies dead. You always want to think about how you're influencing the spawns, right? So the surface level of this is we have the advantage. We have to push in and get this Oddball. Yes. What you have to be thinking about, though, is the enemies are going to be spawning behind you if you if you play your cards right. So you want to get in there quickly. Once you get in there, you are blocking the spawn, and the enemies are going to be spawning behind you, be it PD, be it A, maybe even a calf spawn if they're lucky enough to get a calf spawn. So just something to think about. You want to always manipulate and think about the spawns. And this also puts you guys on kind of a time clock because if you take too long to choose the put to push this, um, they could either A, spawn on the oddball, but in this situation it's pretty unlikely, or B, they're going to be coming up behind you and you're going to be getting shot in the back, right? So next up, when you get to C here, this ball carrier, you know there's two enemies in here, right? You guys only killed two. This ball carrier is moving back right, and your teammate is taking... He's not flying in very quickly. 
I am instantly chucking grenades up there, right? I want damage on whoever is back there before I even enter this doorway. Instead, you wait until you're at the top of the stairs. You even already have an enemy in your vision, and then you throw the grenade. Although the thought was there, you get damage into you yourself before you can even sh think about shooting back, and then he actually gets time to throw a grenade onto you. And although you make a good job jumping out, you were already that one bullet behind in the gunfight, so you were basically a free kill for this guy. So, you know there's... Even if there's not a second enemy here, you see the you see the oddball carrier running that way. I'm throwing grenades, like, right here. I'm looking up. I'm throwing grenades. I don't even care if they're perfectly placed. Just get some grenades up there, right? That is that entry damage. You don't want to wait until you already see this enemy because, again, it's too late. That's how you give him free damage. So, get those... You know there's enemies up there. I know that you know that. Throw those grenades and then think about how you're going to take the gunfight. And for one quick little split second here, um, that grenade actually does still do damage to you, which sets you even further back in this gunfight. Um, so just be ready to put those grenades where you know there are going to be enemies. Um, and this is actually pretty interesting, again, because it's a 1v1 over here, and your teammate doesn't choose to find that other fella. So he actually just picks up the oddball. So I'm really interested to see where you spawn. I'm guessing it's going to be a B area. You actually spawn all the way in PD, right? And that's why sometimes hunting that other enemy um, is actually a better play than actually grabbing the oddball because if your teammate would have came and helped you and hunted this guy down and killed him, if the enemies were slow off spawn to get to you guys, you could have actually spawned closer, be it like Red Room or B. Instead, he leaves this enemy alive, and he's there to block a spawn. So you guys are not going to spawn very close to this oddball. Um, so your teammate actually doesn't rotate at all. He doesn't know where he's going, so that's very unfortunate. So you spawn PD here, and you guys are getting very, very split split spawns. Right now, I'd like to see you all just try to live up and focus for this camo that is up in eight seconds. You make a good play to hurry up and run over. You're, again, and so just something to point out here, you're doing a lot of jumping. A lot of jumping. I like that you're, like, jumping up and trying to, like, slide off everything, but, like, these extra jumps just make it longer for you to get there, and you actually just fly out into the open with a jump. This, you, I don't want to see at all. You should not be flying into the open. And you kind of just burn camo there. Again, these are the decisions that, like, when you die, you're like, why did I do that? And it's very easy to avoid this before it happens. Um, so first off, just get here quickly. Um, and it's 4v4 on the map right now as we speak. So you don't... And now it's... You're actually at a disadvantage. You do not have to get camo the second it pops up, right? You can bait it. You can fight over it for a little bit. Wait till you have the advantage. And you already have one teammate down here practically throwing his life away so by you jumping out like this you guys are just sitting ducks out here right you know they're all in subway you're already one down on the map teammate is he damaged there it looks like he might be trying to get his shields back you guys are at a mega disadvantage you do not have to throw your body at this camo because nine times out of ten it looks like this you get it you try to pop it and you go oh i burned it you know but they were four up you guys were one dead, now you're two dead with, well, actually, you're the only one dead with the other one just spawning up. You just gotta be smarter. Like I said, um, play, play around the camo. Don't just throw your body at it. You really have to strategize how you're going to acquire this camo. Um, it's not always just, oh my god, I'll throw my body at it and die. Because, yeah, sure, you secure it and you burn it. But with you going down, you guys are staggering this push so much, they're just racking up oddball time. Like, this is free oddball time they're getting right now, and they're just going to sit there and hold it because the only teammate you have pushed up is literally hiding here, trash, trying to get his shields back. Um, so this is really, really sloppy. Um, you just very much want to, when in doubt, preserve your life. Preserve your life. Keep eyes over that power equipment um, because you being alive and kind of working your way towards that objective is better than you being dead and just burning the camo, you know what I mean? So, you spawn up here very close to your teammates. You have three teammates pushing this oddball. You get a fantastic spawn here um, over on Pink Street. I want to see you get in here and just secure this oddball. Secure this oddball and get an oddball set up. Instead, you catch eyes on one mid. You're very much trying to chase him. Your teammates are losing fights. You're kind of wasting time here, ATMs. You find one in mid now. You do a good job getting that kill. I like that. And somehow you guys have come up with the oddball. 
So although this is kind of awkward, it, it, it did work out for you. I'm not too, too upset about you kind of holding this ATM angle, but now I'd like to see you get to a power position. Get somewhere where you can see multiple angles on the map and hopefully lay down some damage because even if you get one or two bullets on the spawners, you're doing damage that can help your teammates win gunfights faster, which you're kind of doing here. And you assume he's pushing that way. Oh, and he actually pushes the other way and comes behind you. And see, this is what I meant when I said to get into a power position. Sitting somewhere like this is just very awkward, right? You can't watch all three angles at the same time. I very much, I'd like to put myself somewhere where either my back's to a wall or there's teammates behind me so that people can't really like bamboozle me like that, right? This guy very much made you look silly. Because you're, you're just kind of dancing around this area. There's too much maneuvering that he can do in this area to p give himself the upper hand in this gunfight. And see, now that you're dead, they're, they're in the position that we just explained earlier where they can fly out and get that oddball because they have the advantage now. They're four up. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked to see you spawn on the other side of the map depending on how these fights go for your teammates. And there you have it. You spawn on the opposite side of the oddball because once they saw that they had the advantage, once they get the kill on you in ATMs here, they just swarm that oddball. So try to put yourself in a position. Um, and like I said at the beginning of that sequence, just flush out that oddball and get a hold. By get a hold, I mean, you know, put the oddball somewhere safe, have teammates on both sides of him, have somebody maybe like on C balk, places where you can just shoot the spawners and damage them before they even come in. That's how you slow down a push. Um... Rather than kind of putting yourself in a position where you can get bamboozled pretty easily. Teammate gets oddball. Again, get back and help that oddball. And see, you kind of see that he's safe. He's making a good job rotating. You're ADSing into C. And see, you're doing the same exact thing. You're just kind of you're kind of dancing around. You're checking here. You're checking there. you got to be very quick. If you don't see an enemy, you have to find where those enemies are. Your teammates are literally dying here. You have to get into these fights. You need to get down and dirty. But right now, you're very much... You're kind of tunnel visioning here. You're kind of just looking for action. Okay, there's nothing there. I'll stroll over, check here. You still see nothing. Your teammates are literally getting demolished right now. You have to hear where those gunfights are coming from and hurry up and fight. Because, see, now you're in a 2v1. You see a third enemy. I like to see you using your grenades, but this is this is a very tough situation to be in. And, and although you did some very good damage, the damage was a little too late, right? Your teammates are already dead. So unless you're going to go full lucid mode and kill all these enemies, um, it's really not what we like to see. So you want to hear those gunshots and try to get to them sooner and try to do more to help your teammates. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm really breaking down these plays. I'm going to try to get through some more of this gameplay here. So you grab the stalker off the wall. I like it. Your teammates are trying to fight over this oddball. And you're kind of... See, you kind of just start strolling. Get there quicker. You have the stalker rifle. You have the power weapon. You have teammates fighting. Get in there and fight. I'm not saying throw your body out in the open. But get over there and lay down some shots, right? Try to find where this... See, you're walking over. Once you see the ping, you got to get over here and try to damage them. You got to be ready for them. And you actually have one pop up on your screen. You don't see them right away. You put in some shots. You got to be, yep, they're coming from behind you there. And this is the same situation. You always have to be thinking about where you are spawning them. All of you guys are in PD, right? So unless they're in calf, they're going to be spawning on the other side of the map, which is exactly what happens here. See, completely open. You guys actually kill one back there, so there's only one enemy. So they, the only place for them to spawn is away, and they actually come right up behind you. You panic, you fly out, and you actually catch an open camo, but you guys are too dead. Again, this disadvantage here, and you go down, so now you guys are three dead. And this team is being very inefficient with the oddball, and this is very fortunate for you, so you guys don't have to panic. But just preserve your life here. Again, just because you're getting shot and camo's coming up doesn't mean you have to just throw your body at it, right? Get out and try to live up. Now would be a good time to maybe scuttle out to this ATM area and just try to rat around because um, your teammates are dying very quickly as well. It does not give you the green light to die by any means. And you guys very much have split spawns now. They're all over the map. They have complete map control. You guys are three dead here. Very unfortunate. I will say, good job at least burning the camo, right? If you can't if you can't secure it and get away with it, at least burn it. That's definitely a good choice um, to at least do. Teammate goes big with two kills here. So, again, just get to that oddball. 
Good job getting that damage, having the reticle up, being ready to shoot. And see, I don't, I don't like these routes you're taking. Again, you're doing nothing and your teammates are dying. There is nothing wrong with you pushing towards this oddball and having, like, nothing happen, right? When in doubt, secure the objective first. Get it as safe around the objective as possible. Instead, you they get the objective, you see this guy fighting, and then you almost, like, just assume it's safe. You're like, ah, you know, I don't have to do anything over there. I'll look for this guy over ATMs. No, get to your teammates. Get to that oddball. You miss the jump here. Two teammates are dead. So now you're alone here. You're putting in some good shots, but see this... Oh, no, one pushed out back. Hey, great job getting that kill. I love what I'm seeing here. You drop the shroud, and you're very much making the most of this. I like what you're doing here. You're living up, you're staying around the oddball, and you're buying time for your teammates. This is this is what I'd like to see here, right? Now you guys push this oddball. Now you guys have two dead. And honestly, I would have liked to see you just go grab that oddball. You were very close to it. And to be honest, in lobbies where I'm solo queuing... When you get this kill, I am never assuming that this guy is grabbing the oddball, right? You guys just did a good job securing this side of the map, getting some kills. This is the cheeky oddball time you want to get, right? They're not going to be ready to push, and this is what you see. You come out, nobody's flying at you here. And even if this guy decides to fly out, you have one teammate and two teammates that can very easily kill him. But instead, you kind of leave that oddball. You go, oh, I'm sure my teammate will grab it. Now we're, what, five seconds already? No oddball time. Oddball just now gets picked up. You guys missed probably five seconds of oddball time, and that's where the objective efficiency really comes in. If if you guys aren't fighting anybody, you really need to pick up that oddball. But you do a good job kind of pushing out in these spawners. You're flying out a little bit there, but you see they're all up here. So just use your cover, put in some fights, and then you actually get killed by the spawner in Subway. And that's why I was hesitant to say... Um, flying out like this was a good play. But you guys are honestly buying the time you need for the oddball carry. You guys are hitting 90. I assume you guys go on to win this round probably right here. And there you have it. There's the win on the round. All right, we're going to dive into a little bit of this round, and then we're going to call this here. I'm sorry this one's so long, guys, but, like, there's just so many good, like, teaching points in, like, every gameplay you guys send me, so definitely keep it up. Right here, you choose to fly out the front door here, put in some shots across the map, you come up B steps. Good job being ready to put in damage on this fella. You use the grenade there. And you guys are now up on the map, right? You get the quick kill here. Now, I like that you're flying out B. Just something you have to think about is you guys have some very good weapons on C side here, right? So I don't know if anybody went up, but the battle rifle's up here. Very good weapon, especially if you're shooting across the map with it. And I don't think anybody went to get that stalker rifle on Red Room. So when you secure this B step area... Always be thinking about those weapons, right? You killed this guy coming right out from PD. So chances are he did not gobble up anything up here. The plasmas are up there. The stalker is up there. You guys have the advantage. Camo's coming up in um, 20 seconds. So you have just enough time to go get those weapons. And that is how you get map control. That's how you get the kills. That's how you get the oddball. And then you just think about how how you can manipulate spawns. You actually do a good job flanking here, but you have to be thinking about where the spawns are going to be coming in because you are now blocking the A spawn, right? So your team better pull the ball towards A, and they're actually dying over on C because, again, the way you guys just moved across the map, you guys very much were just a wave coming through the map. It opened up the C spawn, and they were not ready for it. So now you know they're on C side. And, again, you guys just lost two in the kill feed. You're flying out for this camo. And you do a good job to secure it. I it definitely, It's definitely worth it to see that, you know, hey, nobody's looking at this camel. I might be able to snag it. So I do actually like this play. You see them taking oddball up C steps. So there very much could be some action here on this side of the map. So you clear it out. Teammate just died there. You grab those spikes. Grenades. Spikes. Keep it in mind. Oh, you choose to try to jump up. You're very much wasting time on this camo. Uh, and so my only issue with you choosing to fight this guy is chances are very good there's go he's going to have some help here, right? You guys got only one kill, I think, leading up to this sequence, and they're pinging up enemies on B, so the help very easily could be coming this way. Um, and more importantly, you have spike grenades. 
This guy doesn't see you. Just walk up to him and try to stick him. And then if you don't stick him, all right, then maybe we can get into a bandit fight. But very much, you're very we- you're very much exposing yourself with this camo. Enemy sees you. You do a good job living up. Great job living up and throwing that spike grenade. That's what I like to see. That was very good. But you didn't. You took a lot of unnecessary damage by taking the bandit fight here, right? Try to stick this guy by all means. Make him look like a goofball. Not sure why you picked up the ball there. Just don't pick up the ball unless you have the have the advantage and it's very safe in there. Little slow to turn around, but you get this gunfight. I like this. Now you just want to keep securing back C here. And now I'd like to see you get to an area. See, you have to get to an area where you can help your teammates. All you see here is this one little window in mid, right? You don't really, you're not getting info. You're really getting nothing here. I'd like to see you wrap around, secure this top C area, you know, be a force, block that area so they can't just walk in. Because, yep, there you go. I assume they were going to be pushing from that way. So now they have somebody push out in front of Oddball. If they get another kill here, that's the green light for them to pick up the Oddball and run off with it. And you still choose to give up that top C area. You get your shields back. And now there you go. They have the green light to take the oddball. You go down. They push through. They're getting... They're winning the trades here. It's 2v2 on the map. And see, they're just getting that oddball time. And that's what I mean by objective efficiency. They didn't really hesitate too long on killing you and then picking up that oddball. So... This is long enough. We went through enough sequences. They do go on to win both of these rounds and, frankly, a pretty decent stat line. But you can see that even though you did have this very decent stat line, just from what we analyzed here, it is very easy to turn this 20 and 14 to a much higher kill, much lower death game with even a little bit of oddball time, that little sequence where you actually assumed your teammate was going to grab the oddball and they didn't. Um, decisions and thinking about spawns are the most important part of oddball. And when in doubt, do not just throw your body out into the middle of the map there. So, my summary for you, Nabes. Take in the info and think about how you're going to use it, right? Think about the spawns. How many enemies are dead? Are they spawning behind me? That is probably the most important part I'm seeing in this gameplay and how you should could be kind of playing it. Like right here, this was a perfect sequence and example. Preserve your life, you know? If there's going to be some heat coming your way, just live up and try to be that rat. Um, on top of that, use your grenades, whether you're... Entering the gunfight, throw them before you get there. If you're anticipating there's going to be an enemy there, throw a grenade. Chances are pretty good that it's going to do a little bit of damage and give you the upper hand in that gunfight. Um, and more importantly, gobble up the equipment and gobble it up. Use it before you die. Um, it's always better in your hand than the others. Um, widen that strafe a little bit. Uh, I will say your aim is pretty good. I think you're doing a good job getting to the action, but you have to get there faster and put yourself in better positions so that you can lay down uh, the maximum amount of damage. But I will say, I think you have all of the tools that you need here. Um, you just have to think about putting it all together and then mix that in with some smart plays, like not jumping out in the middle of the map. And I think you'll be really impressed at how much your gameplay will change. You just have to very much think about what you're doing and when you're going to do it. And then one other thing I want to mention with all the jumping you were doing i like that you were jumping onto ledges and trying to hit those curb slides and i'm not sure if the height was correct but make sure you have step jump on um i believe it's on whichever setting makes the jumps lower um i believe it is step jump on so if you're jumping up to a ledge you won't jump as high you'll only jump as high as you need to to get on that ledge um and that'll make it much much faster for you if you are going to jump on those planters and things to hit those curb slides just something to think about um and that goes for everybody but guys very long video, but there were a lot of good sequences to kind of analyze and kind of work through for you guys. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, Nabes, you especially. I hope you take what I say and improve your gameplay. Um, everybody else, subscribe, like, 
comment any other tips here for Nabes, how he can improve his gameplay. And uh, yeah, guys, this is completely free, so channel memberships and super thanks. If you'd like to support me monetarily, it helps me out a lot as a content creator, but please do not feel like you have to. And if you have VOD that you would like me to review for a video, guys, go down below in the description. There's a link to join the Discord. It is completely free. From there, there is a VOD submissions tab within the Discord. Um, you can upload some gameplay to YouTube and just link it there, and I will get to it. Um, I think I'm too Two VOD reviews away from getting caught up, and so I'm going to need some more to VOD review. So, guys, if you want to do that, completely free. Go through those steps and throw some gameplay up there. And, guys, that does it from me. A lot of talk. I recorded this after work. My hair is going crazy, and I appreciate all the love and support, guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay tuned for the next video.